Welcome everyone to the one, the only, the annual plush collection of the year. As of January 17th, 2021. This will likely be coming out a couple days after I film it, but we're here. We did it. We did it. We did it. We survived that abysmal 2020, and we are now in a different new year, which started off kind of abysmally, but hopefully it gets better. Um, so, uh, this year I'm doing a little different. Uh, this year, I'm not showing off every single plush that I have, because that is a painful process. It was already a lot to manage the new ones I got this year. So, I'm just doing the old ones. Or, I'm just doing the new ones, not the old ones. The old ones, you can go watch in this video. So, every plush that's not in this video, you know, is new. And every plush that's not in this video, is old so you go watch that video that video and as years go on i will do just that year because i'm not not gonna keep showing off a big it's the thumbnail looks bad even if it looks impressive it looks bad and not only that it's just hard to manage and it makes the video too long and uh, so plush collection 2021 still with that almost whatever number because i'm just gonna add this on to my total last time uh, so yeah, um, let's get started. First up, we have my original character plushies. Basically, my characters that I've made and have my own story. Invade the plush first. It's right there. Go click the playlist and watch it. I really love this series, and you will too, because it's got great storytelling and it's funny and stuff. So yeah, go watch that. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, start off, we have the now finished, and it's been finished in a couple videos, the owner's potato bot. Last video, it was basically just... It was almost done. It was just missing this left arm, which now it is a spiky claw arm with wires. Uh, yeah, there it is. Then we have the updated Mario custom, now sporting his American attire with an actual official Mario plush. Um, may potentially update him a third time, and he might just not be Mario anymore, as I want to, you know, make all my characters original, even if he does have a completely different personality from actual Mario. All right, so next up we have the improved Scorch or Scorchbot 2.0. So yeah, this is basically just a almost perfect copy of Scorch, just, you know, new and updated. Cause you know, if you don't know how he is in the series, he's kind of dead or he's more not dead, just a ghost. So we have his replica. He, 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 he won't stand, he won't stand. Yeah, there he is, there he goes. <laughs> then we have Nightfall. Ghost Scorch's demon companion. So now she she's in the series. She'll show up sometimes. Then we have the robot secretary, Plexi. I really enjoyed making her. She was actually for a D and D thing, and I just converted her into a character. And also because she, she's a cotton potato incorporated on the back of her head. So yeah. Warning! Spoilers for Abigail's Christmas Wish. As this is a very story-heavy video. Uh. Skip to this timestamp if you don't want to see these characters. Okay. Also, they're not going to be in the final thumbnail. They'll just be behind the robot. Okay. So first up, we have Travis's parents. In canon. Not in real life, because my parents are not this much of douchebags. Uh, he's Simon. I, I Just to clarify this now, if anyone isn't, isn't aware... Travis in my videos and my channel is just a mascot. It's not even close to who I am anymore. Uh, especially once I added Abigail into videos, it really stopped being me and it's just started being his own character. So I think it was more of a mascot that just shares my name. But yeah, there's Simon. There's Eliza or Elizabeth. I think you can pick either or. And last but not least, Pyro Shark. Yes, I'm putting him in videos. So. You're gonna enjoy that. Uh, that's gonna be one wild story. And maybe it doesn't just involve me. Ooh, ooh, ooh secret. All right, now get back here there for the spoiler people. Get back in there, get in the corner. You forget, get in the corner, baby, get in the corner, there you go. Welcome back. You didn't see anything, they're all back there. Now the one you've all been waiting for, the start of the video, Five Nights at Freddy's. You've come to expect this. First up, I actually have a duplicate set of all the Funko plushies from Wave 1, as mostly as one, just extras for customs or potential props in other videos. We also have Bonnie, Chica, 
and Foxy. There they all are. I technically own these plushies at one point, but they've all been turned into the Withered, so they aren't really in my possession at the moment. Well, no, they are, but they're just not in this state. Then we have... What? Spring Bonnie? You were in the last video! Well, technically, you weren't in the last video. You were in... Uh, none of these videos, because the old one is now a custom. I actually found a duplicate at Hot Topic, and this is the new one. And I think the face looks a lot better, it looks less sad. She looks very cuter, and, you know, now we have Withered Spring Bonnie. I kind of took liberties in making it not only unique with things like this eye, also making it similar to Springtrap's Withering and all these other spots, so, yeah. These two now exist. Did a little bit of rearranging. Then, we have... Fredbear. I finally got a Sanchi Fredbear after all this time. Oh uh, yeah, after I learned that apparently they weren't going to be restocking the Sanchi plushies, uh, well no they were, if they weren't going to be restocking Fredbear, I knew I had to get on that. I actually got this guy for 65 bucks, which isn't bad considering how much some of these things go on for eBay. And now, I also have an updated Nightmare Fredbear, so now he's less felt and yellow and more brown and, well, Funko. So, yeah. He actually looks much more accurate to Funko. Uh, fun fact, this is literally just a Freddy, but you know, it's actually, I think somehow the brown sticks out more and makes it harder to tell this is just a Freddy and not Fredbear. So, you know, may not be quite accurate colors, but I think it still works. I know this is kind of out of order for the year, but I might as well show these guys off considering they just came out recently and I just did a video on them actually. So, security puppet. Yeah, I mean, what else did you expect me to say? It was, like, cool or something? And it's just, just fucking security puppet. I'm kidding. It's adorable. Phantom BB. Yeah, there you go. It's Phantom BB. Hot Topic plushie that came out in, like, a couple weeks ago. Ugh, come on. Okay. Next up, my new and improved glitch trap. I'm actually really, really proud of this. Like, I made it with just felt and hot glue, and somehow I managed to actually make it look close to a Funko plushie. Um, so yeah, he looks shockingly good, and I'm very proud of this guy. So yeah, that's all I gotta say. We'll get a big man himself. Princess Quest Glitch Trap, the gross yeah, thing. Uh, yeah, he's a scary monster at the end of the game, and he's sort of the powered up glitch trap in my series, so you're gonna see him a lot more. <laughs> And then we have the security breach characters, but not actually the Funko ones first. First up, we have my first custom of Glamrock Freddy. I don't think this will ever show up in videos, but I think it was just nice and sentimental to have this guy. He was a fun to move custom to make, and I actually think I did a pretty good job. But like my sister location paper plushies made a while back, it really does not fit the style of Funko. It's way too detailed, way too big, and it just doesn't look right. It looks much more like a Santee plush, ironically enough. But, uh, yeah, I think I still had fun making them, just not ever gonna appear in another video. Also, it ended up using the, like, out of, like, date calendar design, so that isn't accurate. You know what is accurate? My new one! Yeah, Glamrock Freddy, but the Funko plushie. Uh, obviously it's improved, it looks much better. I honestly am weirded out when I see the one that Funko made, because this just looks better in, like, every way, shape, and form. Yeah, my new Glamrock Freddy with actually a 3D bow tie, considering... I actually did end up getting a new Freddy bow tie like that one, so hopefully I might just put that one on, but I don't know. I might keep this one. Oh, no, I'll think about it. Let me know in the comments or something. There's a Glamrock. This abysmal mate wave kept getting more abysmal with Monty, which I actually didn't change much about, minus the fact that he has a yellow stomach and a uh, mohawk. So yeah, I actually really like this guy. I think they did his uh, glasses and lightning better. Then we have Roxanne Wolf. Also made it better, gave it a tail, gave it some hair, made it awesome. There's Roxanne. And then, Chica. Yeah, Glamark Chica. Didn't really change much about this one besides giving it lipstick and earrings, but yeah, there's Glamark Chica. My old Vanny is gone. And to replace it, an arguably worse one, but eh, I still really like it. I think I still prefer the new Vanny design over the old one, just this plush is not great even if I added stuff to it and made it better. And a security girl, which will actually be showing up in videos. How? I don't know. You'll figure that out later. Scott actually gave us a little book series at the start of this year called Fazbear Frights, and honestly, I've been really enjoying them. I do plan on making more characters from these books, not only for Daco's songs, but also just for episode ideas. Including, but not limited to, 
Count the Ways Freddy, with a couple exterior features being based off the e Brady model from Dotco's music video, a couple features such as movable eyebrows with wires and an opening stomach, which you can actually see the wire I used in there. So yeah, a really cool plush. I'm very proud of this guy. Another thing we got this year, which was mostly actually last year, and actually no, not mostly last year, a little bit last year, mostly this year, was FNAF AR. And we only sadly got one official plush from it, but I made some customs over the years. I think they fit episode ideas. First up, we have the actually official Frost Bear. Some people say this is the best plush of this year. I don't really agree with them, but they can have their own opinion, I guess. And then we have Toxic Springtrap from the Wasteland event. I think I honestly did a really good job with this. I actually just took a Mr. Hippo and modified it, added a snout, made it actually look like Toxic Springtrap, and there you go. He's got all this web stuff on the back of him, bubbles everywhere. Uh, yeah, I am very proud of this guy. There he is. Then we have uh, my characters from my Halloween special, which was the Dark Circus. We have first up Ringmaster Foxy, including a little whip. So yeah, there he is. Then we have Magician Mangle with her little uh, endoskeleton head, which actually has a little spiral in its eye, and its little magic stick. Yeah, the electricity eye and everything. And then we have Clown Springtrap. Sporting a big old clown nose, his face, his weird smile, and all that stuff. All that good stuff. There he is. That's all this year's FNAF plushies. Time to rearrange. Whoa! Moved all the big ones to the back. Now we've got Mario! For once, we're actually doing the second series up on this bed instead of on the floor. First up, Baby Peach. I didn't have a Baby Peach. I saw this in Target and was like, well, one hard to get a Baby Peach. So I got a Baby Peach, and now she's here in my hand. She's actually very tiny. Uh, so now I have Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Donkey Kong, so it's pretty sweet. Next up, I have a Red Toad. And more, nothing less, I, my old red toad was old, it was missing its vest, so I needed to get a new one, and I got one. Not a bad toad plushie, honestly, I kind of wish it was a little less fat, but other than that, not bad. Then we have Poltergust Luigi. They finally restocked this guy after years, and after years of bootlegs and terrible, terrible bootlegs, I got him. And now he's in my grasp, but it's honestly pretty shocking to have this guy in my possession after all this time. And then, the costume I actually talked about I was working on in the last plush collection video, Guiji. I'm gonna use this for an episode at some point, I'm gonna be doing more Mario videos, and Guiji's gonna be in one of them, so stay tuned for that video. And then, Sanae's new release plush this year that I actually talked about in that video, Metal Mario! Here he is, he's big, he's shiny, he's got big old fisties, and he's uh, way better than the World of Nintendo one, by a long shot. Look at him go. Then we've actually got a bunch of villain characters, which is pretty sweet. First up, we got Tri Bowser, which I didn't expect them to make a really nice one, but oh my god, this thing is so good. Easily in my top 10 Mario plushies, maybe even my top 5. This thing is mwah, it's beautiful. And it's his finest hour. A new and improved King K. Rule made entirely from scratch. Based off of his N64 and Smash Brothers design, he's got his gold belly, his gold shackles, and overall is just a big old crocodile. Look at him go. Look at him with his eyeball and his mouth. And he goes, ah. And then, from Mario and Luigi Bowser's inside story, we have the Dark Star. There he is. Uh, I can actually hold him from the back, like, through these little holes in his, like, effects, so you can actually make him just kind of dance around without actually having to hold the star or holding the effect specifically. And then, after all this time, I managed to get the seven Koopalings. Um, I found them in stock. Official, and so I got them all. And I'm honestly pretty shocked considering it's been since what, seven years since these things came out? First up, we got Larry. And then we have Iggy. And then we got Lemmy. Then we have Roy. We got Morton. No. We have Ludwig von Koopa. I did a voice for that. And Wendy O. Koopa. So, there they are. All official. Shockingly enough. I'm very happy I have all these guys now. Alright, I've got more room on this bad, but I think I'm going to move down to the floor. Much better. 
Okay, so next up, we have the Pokemon. I'm gonna be honest, I have an addiction to Pokemon plushies. I just keep buying them, even if I don't really need them. First up's Gengar. He's a little bit bigger than I would have wanted, but eh, it still works. Then we have an approved Dragonite over my last one, which is a bootleg. This thing looks so much better than the last one. And then finally, to complete off the original three starters, Charmeleon from the Sitting Cuties line, or the Pokemon Fit line, depending on where in the world you live. If you couldn't tell, I'm doing this in order of generation. Shockingly enough, I actually have more Gen 2 than Gen 1 this time around. First up is Lugia. This guy's much better than my last Lugia, which was also a bootleg. He is bigger, he's got bigger arms, and he's from Tomy. I think it was in like 2008 or something this guy was made. Then we have Tyranitar. Look at this big old guy. Finally. Dinosaur. Go there. Then, we'll go along with Umbreon, we have Espeon. She's so cute. I really like this Espeon. I'm gonna get the rest of the evolutions at some point, just not currently in my collection. Then, we have Porygon 2. Look at him. Little, little duck man. I'm gonna get Porygon 1 at some point, and hopefully a Porygon Z as well, but I just found Porygon 2, and I bought him. Because I think Porygon 1 was out of stock at the time that I got him. And, last but not least, we got Pichu. Look at him. Tommy one also, so yeah. A little crusty, but he works. Oh no, he fit! I'm gonna bundle up three, four, six, and seven. I do not have any new ones from Gen 5, but you know, uh it's pretty cool to do way. From Gen 3, we have Groudon and Rayquaza to complete the three weather boys. Gen 4 includes Lucario. I actually really like this Lucario plush. I think this one was made by Santa. And Manaphy. I kind of just randomly got this in a lot with a different plush. So yeah, I'll stick this guy over here considering this is the empty spot. Incineroar. He's Gen 7, but the Gen 6 character isn't like it's going to take up much spot anyway. Chessman. I actually managed to find this guy. He was lost and he's been found. So now I have Chessman and Fennekin. Still no Tommy Froki, because that is Twisted Froki. Why did I make a Twisted Froki? <laughs> figure that out later. Next up is the easily biggest generation I've added to this year. More, most plushies out of all these. I think mean, honestly, it might be the same number as everything combined here. Um, generation eight. They came out with a lot of these guys this year, so I bought a lot of these guys. First up, Yamper. Look at him. So stupidly cute. Stupid face. <laughs> And we've got Lally and Weezy, well, with any, with any intelligent man with this big mustache, his little friend Joel with his beard. Then we have Galarian Surfetched. He's got his big old, what is this, leak? I think that's what it is. He, he can, he can, I don't even think it's Galarian Surfetched. I think his name's just Surfetched. He goes stabbing everywhere. And then Galarian Ponyta. I think this plush is absolutely adorable. It's a very, very fluffy. And they love it. Then we've got Obstagoon. He's bendable in basically every part of his body. That's a limb. And kind of bendable in the torso, but not really. Uh, so there he is, Obstagoon. He breakdance. Next three are from the evolution trio of the starters. Uh, first up we got Drizzle. The middle evolution specifically. Korthwacky. And Raboot. They're a little big, but they all serve their purpose. And then, you think I just leave the final evolutions out? Uh-uh. Easily, the biggest Pokemon plush I have in mind is Snorlax, is Rylaboom. Oh my god, this guy is huge. I mean, like, I can hardly hold him in one hand. And he can pull, he can pull like a monkey. He's got bendable legs, bendable arms, and that's about it, actually. But he has his drumsticks, so he cool. I kind of wish he would have come with, like, a... A little foam drum, even if it was tiny. Because, you know, it's kind of weird having him just hold the drumsticks without any drum. Then, we have Inteleon. I love this Inteleon. Bendable neck and torso. Bendable arms. Bendable legs. And a bendable tail. This thing is a beast of a plush. And since its tail is back support, it can actually stand on its own. Who would have thought? And last but not least, Cinderace. Uh, bendable legs. Bendable arms. Bendable neck and torso. He can actually... He, I think he has easily the most bendable neck out of the three of them. 
is very nice. And that's all my Pokemon plushies I got this year. Next up is, uh, my miscellaneous characters. So, next up, we're not actually completely miscellaneous. Plants vs. Zombies was a series I was going to start in 2020, but I ended up putting it on hiatus. Mostly because it was still a work in progress at the time, and I'm still planning everything out, and it's winter. I couldn't even film the first episode even I wanted to. It's cold as hell outside, so currently it's on hiatus until spring. But if there's ever, you know, a time where you're like, huh, this Plants vs. Zombies plush video didn't come out, it hasn't come out, what time of the year is it? And it's winter? That's probably why. So yeah, the series will basically be in like a late spring, early fall. That will be when I make the videos and it will be in hiatus between that. So yeah, showing off all the plushies now. Pea Shooter. Some of these characters will actually be from the Plants vs. Pikmin video. If you remember that one, they just weren't in last year's plush collection from what I remember. And then we got Sunflower. She's actually the Jazz Wars one. I actually very like that one. It's, it, I, I very like that one. It's very cute. And then we got Walnut. Whoop, there he is. I love Walnut. And Chatty Bomb. Powie. No, Powie was the tomato mine. This is this is uh or no Spadow was the potato mine. This is Powie. Powie was the cherry bomb. Not Spadow. Spadow was the. I don't have potato mine though. I think the next one was Chopper. But yeah, there he is. <laughs> His mouth is very large. But you know. To make him eat things. He can't eat things if his mouth is like this. He needs to go. And then we've got Ice Pea. Or Snow Pea. Whatever you prefer. And this is actually the Jazzwares Pea Shooter I customized into Repeater. So now he, you know, is Repeater. He can actually make the ball come out of his mouth, even if it's not very effective. He also has a dent in his head. Look at that dent. Stupid idiot. Then we have Fume Shroom. Sun Shroom. And Doom Shroom. We've also got the Cactus, which I actually gave eyelashes as it's a female, apparently. I don't know if it's a Luigi fan thing, but I think I kind of want to... You know, not very many plants are indefinitely female, so it would be nice to just, you know, make a couple more female. I've got some study, funny stuff planned for her anyway. We also have Starfruit. Nope, oh, he kind of... So we can do this again. Starfruit. There he is. Nope, he, he failed again. Starfruit. Yeah, nope, he... Starfruit! Look, he's there! Yeah. Hey, last but not least for the plants, Cabbage Pulp. Right from some people, this specific Cabbage Pulp was rare, but I actually managed to find this pretty easily. I just kind of prefer the little cute, smaller one over the fat new one. And here's a custom Crazy Dave. Be careful, because his arm is very fragile. I need to glue that back in better. But yeah, I made a crazy day. He can also take off the pot off his head. But I am too scared to at the moment, so I'm not going to. Since we're ending the plants with their boss, let's start with the zombies with their boss. Dr. Zomboss, a custom made of the rock and roll Zomboss that I gave him a big old brain, I gave him his lab coat, and some black pants. He's still got the boots, though. So yeah, Dr. Zomboss is looking pretty fresh. We have the normal zombie. The Conehead Zombie. The Flag Zombie. Technically the Big Wave Beach Flag Zombie, but, you know, it's the only Flag Zombie we've got at the moment. Buckethead Zombie. Look at him. This is apparently the one that makes sound, even if mine does not make sound. And I gave him a bucket. So yeah, it's also got a little bit of detail, like the red paint that he has in the game. So there's Buckethead. Actually, wait, he should probably go back here. He's stuck back there. Pole Volter Zombie. He actually looks really good. I think Pole Volter is probably one of the, my favorite zombies out of the ones that I've got. And last but not least, the reason I moved him back is because Gargantua. He's big. He's got a big old coat, a big old pant. He's actually got his, uh, what do you call it? The flipping, um, telephone pole. That's what I'm thinking of. Uh, it's currently broken. It's just one of the wires snapped off for threads, so I gotta glue that back together. But yeah, I honestly think this is cool. You can actually take it out of his arm if you pull hard enough. Hold on, doing this with one hand is very difficult. You can take it out of his arm. You can also take off his arm with a magnet and you can take off his head. So technically you can actually do this like how he dies in the game. Dies by arm, dies by head, and then he launches the imp. Or actually I think this one goes in the middle. But yeah, the imp can also come out of his backpack. Even if the imp looks a little uh, unfinished. 
This is definitely a version 2 of the Gargantuar, but if I'm going to be honest, I like it much more than the first one. And now we're on to the true miscellaneous stuff, minus a couple series, but they're just only got one or two plushies. So, uh, first up, doing starting with the indie stuff. Kind of indie stuff, like half indie stuff, and then just one real indie character, which is Monica from Doki Doki Literature Club. I don't think she was in the last video. If she was, fact check me on that. And then we got Steve from Minecraft, sporting his diamond armor. And this is actually in my Abigail's Christmas Wish video. Monami from Danganronpa. Uh, just gonna let you all know that you may notice a theme going forward. I'm not gonna point out what that theme is, but I think you'll figure it out. Next up, we have some Kirby characters, including Rick, the hamster. Look at him go. He's so cute. Kine, the owl. He's fit. And Koo, the fish. From Kirby. Yeah, only new Kirby places I've gotten, but they're great. Wait! This went over my head completely, but I also got Chef Kawasaki. I don't know how I forgot about that. And sadly, but also kind of happily, the last plush I got from Sonic was Dr. Eggman. There it is. It's actually the GE animation little emoji one, which is, ironically enough, I actually have an order had ordered one, but I'm delaying this video too much so the or one i order is coming in a couple days but it's actually the there's a picture of it it's actually the i think toy network sonic x eggman might be wrong about that but it'll be replacing this one even if it was only seen in one video but yeah thankfully i'm getting a much better eggman now next up is the legend of zelda here is zelda from legend of zelda i actually took a bootleg ocarina of time zelda plush and modified it and added better eyes and hair so she actually looks much better even if her eyes are a little bugged out from down, they look fine from up, I think. And then, a custom Ganondorf with a sword, which you can actually take out of his back. It's fairly basic, but it's a sword. I also gave him wires in his arms so he can actually position his arms around and stuff. They're sort of connected together, so they kind of move simultaneously, which is pretty sweet in my opinion. And then we have the Metroid series. Here's an updated Ridley, which is much better crafted in my opinion. His eyes are better, his tongue is better, his face is better crafted, and everything is just all better all around. His wings got updated and stuff, so now he, uh, yeah, he looks much better. And I think he can still stand on his own, you just gotta put effort into it, and doing that with one hand is gonna be impossible. And then we got a brand new Samus. This is definitely my final Samus. It looks much better than the last one. Using a more pumpkin color than the orange that I used last time. More detailed suit, more detailed arm cannon. Uh, yeah, this overall is a very nice blush. And in fact, you can actually... Come on! Come on! There you go. Take off her helmet. There's Samus. She got a ponytail, even. Next up is the Sané All-Star Fire Emblem Collection. Starting off with Marth. I honestly think these plushies are very well made. I'm actually pretty happy I managed to get them. And we have Roy. Very, very, very wobbly feet. Sway feet. Going up and forth, back and forth. Ike. Here's Lucina, whose hair is up for some reason. One thing I don't get about this plush is for some reason the back of her hair is made of a very scratchy material, yet the front of her hair is a very silky material. It's almost like they just kind of ran out of fabric and just said screw it, but that's it's just me. Also, I do like the d detail with her eye looking like that. I don't know Fire Emblem lore, so I'm not really sure how that works, but that's a neat effect. And last but not least, Corrin. Sporting very long hair. This plush is very soft, mostly because the hair is very long, and it is also made of that very silky material, both on the outside and in. I wish more plushies had hair like this. This is so nice. Stop giving us that stupid stuffed hair. Just unstuff it and let it flow. That just looks so much better. Last two Nintendo game characters, I think you might know who this next one is, judging by the fact that the bell is so loud, it's Isabel. Very loud bell. Actually, a very cute plush, all things considered. She's... She, she, she doing her thing. That's actually it for the Nintendo characters. I didn't realize that, uh, that was the last one. I thought that the next one I had was actually not, uh, an old plush, but apparently it was. So, yeah, go figure. Next up, we have the Fan Gamer Conquer's Bad Fur Day plush. I think this is a great plush. It's based off the N64 design, which we actually haven't had a plush of Conquer for the N64 design before. He's got his really nice hoodie. You can actually unzip it. It's a real zipper. 
uh, his legs. He actually used to have a sound box in him, but I cut that out for videos because it's just much harder to have to manage a plush with a sound box in it. Uh, his crown is actually a magnet, and you can take it out. Take it off. Not out. Just off. So yeah, there he is. King Conquer. Or just normal Conquer with the crown. Because, you know. And then, keeping the fan gamer trend going, Solid Snake. I didn't think they were going to make this guy, but then they did. And it was shockingly surprising. And I'm honestly really happy. Apparently, as a pose he has a poseable wolf skeleton, not actually made of wire, made of like an action figure plastic material. And yeah, he looks really nice. He can pose all his limbs, and he, can, he can't stand, but you know, he can get close, I guess. He can pose him around stuff, make him crawl. And actually, it was a set of two, so it comes with Otacon, a different character from Metal Gear that I don't actually know who this is. But, you know, he's pretty cool. Comes with invisible glasses. They also came with a magnetical, magnetic ketchup bottle and a magnetic grenade, but those I do not have. They're in my prop box, and I'm not about to go fish those out. Then we have a couple from Street Fighter. Ryu. From Street Fighter. It's, yeah, Street Fighter V, I guess. I think that's the specific kind. And also Ken. From Street Fighter. And we have Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, you probably weren't expecting this one. Uh, yeah, so this, I actually acquired the older, like, think 2000, early 2000s Crash plush. I really like this guy. I didn't want the stinking insane trilogy one, because that one looked kind of dumb in my opinion. I just really like this old one. This is a really nice plush. It's got, you know, good eyes, good eyebrows, good hair, and, you know, all around just looks basically exactly like Crash. I think the only thing that's really inaccurate compared to the modern design is I think his, um... His, like, eyes are a little less detailed. I might be wrong about that. Or, I think, you know, he had, like, whiskers in the new one. But, yeah. That's basically just modern Crash, you know, old design. He was a very tiny Sephiroth. Uh, I'm gonna get Cloud at some point. But, you know, I didn't realize they were this small. And if you want them any bigger, you're gonna have to pay quite the pretty penny. And I'm not about to pay that penny for Sephiroth and Cloud. And last but not least, uh, kind of a weird one to end on, Joker from Persona 5. This is by Great Eastern. Uh, guess the theme in the comments. Anyway, um, here it is. A much more underwhelming shot, but there they all are. My push collection this year. I'm gonna count them all. So taking out the ones that were very likely in the last video, which I'm gonna assume were like five or six, I have about 107 to add to the collection. Add that to the almost 400, and I would like to say, I now have 500 plushies in my collection. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it. I am gonna, whew, 500 and counting. Uh, that's, ooh, that is a lot. So, yeah, 2021. Let's hope this year is much better than the last one and maybe we can make it 600. I'd prefer not, probably shouldn't, but it's gonna happen anyway, let's be honest. So, bye everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Oh yeah, I wanted to show this at the end of the video, but I actually didn't. Uh, so here it is now. Technically not a plush, but I acquired a Rob the Robot. Why else would I buy this? I'd be very honestly shocked if you couldn't guess the theme. It's now in production. It'll happen soon. I'm just come on, please, you slow brain people.